In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can travel Southeast Asia on just £600 a month. And you're probably thinking, how is that possible? How can I travel that cheaply? Surely it's not going to be a nice time. But trust me, it is. I'm going to show you specific websites you can go on, which you can literally stay in places for £1 a night. And they aren't just a bunker in the ground. It is an actual nice place to stay. I'm going to be covering four different topics from accommodation, transport, food, and then fun like activities and going out and stuff like that. I'm gonna show you exactly how you can travel on just 600 pounds a month, because that's what I did for seven months around Southeast Asia. So let's get started. I'm just gonna give you three general traveling tips. Is one, get off the beaten path. When you get off the beaten path, everything becomes so much cheaper. You normally get very close to local prices. The second one is travel in off peak. If it's off peak, you're much more likely to get really good deals on tours, hotels, hostels, all that kind of stuff. So travel off peak if you can. Then use a budgeting app. I personally use Wonder Wallet and I've used it for the last three or four years and it's perfect for tracking everything you spend in a day, in a month for a whole trip. So you can put your accommodation in there, your food, like any activities and it's everything is just in the app and you can see exactly how much you spent so you know that you're sticking to your budget. Oh, and it's free so it's easy, just download it. So let's start with accommodation, which is usually gonna be your biggest cost in a day. And I use three, four, four different websites. I use Airbnb, Booking.com, Booking Agoda, and Hostel World. And these, these uh, websites are the best because I literally compare all the different places to stay in an area across these four websites and I always usually go for one of the cheapest places. But it's not just you, good use like looking for the cheapest places you've also got to look at the rating you don't want to stay in somewhere which is dirt cheap but also has a rating of a, like a three star which is why these websites are good because they're also rated i'm going to show you this website i go to and a lot of people do not know this website and it's literally you can get such great deals so here i've searched for hanoi in vietnam and i found this place to stay with 8.8 .8 star rating for only one pound a night like how ridiculous is that and it can sleep two people. So that you can literally be paying 50 pence for one night stay. So on Hostel World in Hanoi, there's some places you can stay for two pounds, some three pound places, and they still have really good rating. Like this one is a 9.4 star rating and it's three pounds a night, which is gonna save you so much money compared to going to somewhere, another hostel, which is 10 pounds a night. So do your research and make sure you choose the cheapest places, but also have a good rating. Through my time traveling, it's not always been hostels which are the cheapest. Sometimes hotels or guest houses can be cheaper than staying in hostels. So look across and look at the different options you have and just go for the cheapest. So one thing to bear in mind is a lot of rooms have two options. You can either have a fan room or an AC room. So if it is really hot and you're not good with the warm weather then maybe it is best just to spend two or three dollars more and get an AC room. So moving on to food and this is somewhere you can save so much money just by eating locally. So people are often scared to eat at local local restaurants like street food but most of the time it's going to be fine. On street food you often see them cooking the food right in front of you and if it's on a hot flame, it's gonna kill all the bacteria, and generally it is always going to be fine. I did get food poisoning when I was away, but that is almost part of it, and why go to a country and not try any of their food and just eat Western food? It's like going to Italy and not trying their pizza, like, who would do that? So just try the street food, try the local food, and you're much more likely to get much cheaper prices than going to a Western restaurant. So firstly, I'm going to be talking about how to move around a country on buses and trains, and then I'm going to be talking about how to get cheaper flights. So, so there's two ways you can usually get around a country, and that is either by bus or train, or a ferry if you're in the Philippines or Indonesia. But you've got to weigh up your options and see, and have a look and compare the prices to see is a train cheaper or is a bus cheaper. And often the trains can be cheaper because they can pack more people on it and you can get some really cheap prices, but always compare. The other thing is don't book like your trains and bus tickets online because these prices are normally hiked up and they know tourists will be booking them. Whereas locals always go to like the ticket office at the local bus station or the local train station and buy it there. So that is a cheaper way. 
So when you get off these buses, you're going to hear like, I'll give you local price. I give you special price. I give you discount. They're still going to be tourist high prices. So just ignore them, go down the street, walk five minutes, and you're much more likely to get a much cheaper price by a taxi or a motorbike taxi down the road. Okay, if you're moving around a city, one thing to do is take motorbike taxis. So these can be three or four times cheaper than a normal car taxi. And so use these to your advantage. Even if it's a bit scary, you're in sappy stage, eh? get used to it because taking motorbike taxis is the cheapest, one of the cheapest ways to get around. I remember getting to the airport in Vietnam for like two pounds. Whereas if I took a normal taxi, it was gonna be about 10 pounds, which so I've saved eight pounds and I probably got there a lot quicker because motorbikes are a quick way of getting around Vietnam. <laughs> Don't go with a tuk-tuk driver or a taxi driver. Always ask the price before you get in because if you not agreed on a price, then they can literally charge whatever they want and they could charge you a lot. So make sure you know the price before you get in so you don't get scammed. So moving on to flights, the best time to book a flight is about three months in advance. And this is for more longer haul flights, not internal flights, which you can normally book a week in advance. So for longer flights, book about three months in advance and you're most likely to get the best deal. You can also get um, flight trackers and apps which like track flights and tell you the best time to book a certain flight. So maybe have a look at them. Make sure you fly from a big airport to a big airport as you, these are usually your cheapest options. So for example, flying from Bangkok to Jakarta is gonna be a lot cheaper than for example, Chiang Mai to Jakarta in Indonesia. So take that into account, fly from a big airport to another big airport. The other thing you can do is use a VPN and go on Skyscanner or a flight website. And usually like a flight from somewhere, if you use a VPN from Vietnam or somewhere else, is gonna be a lot cheaper than a Western country. So take this advantage of this, get a VPN, get a cheap one, and you can pretend you're somewhere else and you can usually get some pretty good deals off. So you might save yourself 50 pounds, 60 pounds. So use that to your advantage. So moving on to fun, which is all like the going out, activities, tours, stuff like that. One of the most expensive things you can actually do is go on these guided tours. For example, a trip around Halong Bay or something like that is going to be really expensive. Normally like 100 US or something like that. And that is so much more expensive than anything else you do. So before you go on that tour, really make sure, is it worth it? Something like Halong Bay or something like that is probably... The only way to do it is to go on a tour. So do not miss out on that experience and splurge where it is necessary. One of the things you have to do if you're traveling around Southeast Asia is learn to haggle. Haggling will save you so much money, whether that's buying things in a market, maybe on taxis, tuk-tuk, stuff like that. You're going to save so much money. They're going to put up the prices because they see you're a tourist. But if you haggle your prices down, you're much more likely to get a closer to local price. The other thing is make sure you make use of happy hour. You can often get really good deals on cocktails, beers, all that kind of stuff. So take advantage of that. Often there can be really good deals. For example, when I was in Vang Vieng in Laos, there was literally an hour at a bar where you can get free drinks for the whole hour. So take advantage of that. You can literally get drunk for free. <laughs> in Southeast Asia, beer is always cheaper, especially local beer. You can usually get it for 50 cent or a dollar or slightly over compared to cocktails, which are gonna be a lot more expensive maybe three four five dollars so take advantage of that and drink beer get used to it because you're going to drink a lot of it for very cheap so that are all my tips on traveling on just 600 pounds around southeast asia use these tips these hacks and you will save so much money in your trip guys i am so excited for traveling after covid i've got a really cool summer ahead i've got loads of cool amazing video ideas coming so if you're interested you do not want to miss out. So please, please hit subscribe down below. Like this video to push it out to more people. And I will see you in the next video. See you later.